dear devotees and welcome to today's session. How are you doing? I pray that all is well with you and your families at this time. So we have just nine days left for the Kartik month to finish and today we're on verse number 18 of this beautiful pastime of Mother Yashoda binding baby Krishna and we've just reached the climax of the Leela where Mother Yashoda has caught Krishna, she's trying to bind him but all the ropes that she's gathered are just falling short and it's becoming bewildering to all the elderly gopi friends of Mother Yashoda and to Mother Yashoda herself. So she's already experienced this kind of phenomena when Krishna had opened his mouth and showed the universal form. So she, at that time as well she was bewildered but she shrugged it off that ah, this must be too much paneer. <laughs> But now it's happening again, where she can see, oh, see what's happening again. The rope is not going around. So let's see in today's verse, as we get an inner personal view of the mind of a pure devotee and how they think when adversities come their way and when they can't understand what Krishna is doing or has planned. So we move on to text 18. Svamatho Svinnagatraya Visrasta Kabara Shrajaha Dristva Parishra Mam Krishna Kripa Yasit Svabandana Translation Because of Mother Yashoda's hard labor, her whole body became covered with perspiration and the flowers and comb were falling from her hair. So we can see the endeavor of Mother Yashoda here. She, you must remember she's an elderly woman. You know, when Krishna was born to Nanda Baba and Mother Yashoda, they were very elderly at that time. And, uh, you know, to, for elderly people to take care of a young baby, especially a restless baby, boys, <laughs> especially restless boys, and the number one most restless is Krishna. Uh, Krishna is number one in everything. So restlessness also, he is number one. <laughs> So, for elderly people to take care of this young boy and being so restless is not easy. And you can see here, Mother Yashoda is being put through her paces here. So, she has to look after him, take care of the milk, then find out now where he went. He's causing mess everywhere. Who's going to clean all that? Now she can't find him. Then she looks, she finds him and then he runs. Now she has to run after him. And then she comes and catches him by the hand. Now she caught him. What to do with him? <laughs> she has to take him, pull him and go and find the ropes, bring him back. Then she tries to tie and now it's two fingers short. And everybody's looking, all her gopi friends. And we know the mood with friends. They tease each other. So they're all looking at this and smiling and saying, eh, Yashoda, kya ho gaya? <laughs> What's happening there? So she's like, not embarrassed, but she's like uh, shy. You know, that just see my son, how he's, you know, there, there's a certain, there's a certain uh, emotion that experience that in the embarrassment is also the enjoyment. It's like a shyness. But there's also enjoyment in that, to be teased that way. I don't know how to explain this, but there is an emotion like that. Where you're shy, you're embarrassed, but you're also enjoying it. You're happy that that's happening. So we see her, her gopi friends, the elderly friends, they're also looking and saying, Hey, what's happening there? This fellow is running and making mischief. So, you know, this for older people to be running and, and rushing and for old people to be running behind little children and cleaning up and catching them and tying them and oof, this is a lot of work. So we can see now Mother Yashoda 
has reached her point this is can't do anything more than this and she's tiring and she's becoming tired and we see she's even perspiring now you know she had to run because little children once they start running oh, 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 oh. i we see that here most of the little children here in mayapur are in that age group you know 3 years to 5 years to maybe about 8 years and uh, when all the uh, parents come out in the park here then uh, you see them when they're running who and to catch them <laughs> so it's fun sometimes to see because the the child wants to run but mother and father no hey don't go too far you know i told you the story of how below but they don't listen <laughs> they don't listen so because they don't listen now the mother and father have to put on tackies now and get ready because the race is going to start so they can run when they start taking off and they want to run they can run so now and when the child is fearful can you imagine krishna now is fearful so he is more running more faster he can run and so mother yashoda is just completely fatigued she's perspiring the description is describing that the hair decoration that she had the flowers and the comb that comb would have been to hold the hair decoration all of that is falling down now you know and and it's uh, you know she's she's really becoming tired you know when somebody is tired you you can look at their face and see oh oh you had a long day so when especially for an older person to go to something like this it's uh, quite difficult especially at the age of mother yashoda and nanda baba but this does something because this is the turning point in the leela let's see translation goes on when child krishna saw his mother thus fatigued he became merciful to her and agreed to be bound so this is the turning point of the leela that krishna is swarat prabhupada was telling us in yesterday when the verse we did 2 days ago that uh, krishna is actually telling mother yashoda i i am merciful to you that's why i'm letting you bind me hmm? so when he sees her face and he sees how she's endeavoring then the endeavor creates the mercy then krishna now is prabhupad says here he merciful to her so endeavor is symbiotic with mercy as soon as we endeavor for krishna as soon as we endeavor in devotional service we are guaranteed that krishna will be merciful on us so this is the uh this is the symbolism behind the two fingers too short that one is your effort what are you doing to come closer to krishna and the other is his effort what he is doing to come closer to you because unless there is effort and mercy there's no relationship and there's no sambandha gyan if there's no sambandha gyan if there's no relationship then what is devotional service there is no such thing as devotional service then there has to be two distinct entities acting independently in love they have to be acting independent by their choice they must be uh doing these activities in love that's the only time it's love otherwise how you test whether there somebody loves hmm? you see what they do if somebody just keep saying oh i love i love you i love you i love you and don't do anything then what is that love you <laughs> you just chanting here this is not about chanting here this is about doing something so when you endeavor for the person when you endeavor just like we can see shila prabhu pad by the love that he shared and uh by the love that he had to serve his spiritual master bhakti siddhanta swami prabhupad hmm? by that love look at what is created you can just you can get a glimpse you won't even understand the whole thing but you'll get a glimpse of what how much he loved his spiritual master by the uh 
by the creation of the whole of ISKCON and the activities that is created for the devotees. So this is a semblance of what is love. So in the endeavor, then mercy is warranted. So this is a very big turning point. Krishna is totally independent, as the first verse of Bhagavatam says. So he's Swarat. So he can do anything he wants. But when he looks at his devotee, he becomes merciful. So this just see, when the devotee looks at the Lord, it becomes endeavor. When the Lord looks at the devotee, it becomes mercy. This is the exchange that happens. The, the devotee wants to do something for the Lord. Anytime, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, anytime that the, the devotee had interaction with the Lord, then he wants to do something for the Lord. He wants to serve. He wants to something. You want to do something. Therefore, in Vedic culture, at least the first thing we do is offer one cup of water to anybody, any guest, anything. Because you started the endeavor. From that side then, the blessing will come, mercy. So this is why culture is so important and hospitality was so important. Because by your simple endeavor of offering water, and Krishna says that, Patram pushpam falam toyam, hmm? offer me fruit, flower, leaf or water. Yo me bhakti aprayochati, but you offer it with bhakti. Tataham bhakti upahritam asnami prayata atmanaha. That if you offer this with love and devotion, I'll accept it. So immediately your endeavor, your effort creates mercy. So this is the equation. If you want to summarize the whole Damodar Leela and everything we've been reading and learning about so far, it comes down to this equation. When the devotee sees the Lord, there's endeavor. And when the Lord sees the devotee, there's mercy. It all sums up in this one statement. And the interaction within this whole Leela is all based on this equation. So Prabhupada says in the purport here, When Mother Yashoda and the other ladies finally saw that Krishna, although decorated with many bangles and other jeweled ornaments, could not be bound with all the ropes available in the house, they decided that Krishna was so fortunate that he could not be bound by any material condition. So just see how they are thinking. Once there's endeavor, then there can be understanding after that. First serve. Even when we meet the most confidential associate of the Lord, the spiritual master, 4.34 describes this. That you have your questions, fine, but first serve. Pariprashnena sevaya. First do sevaya to the spiritual master, to the person who is guiding you spiritually. First do sevaya. Then upadesh shanti te gyanam. Then you ask your upadesh, your questions. And then gyanina statva darshanaha. Because that person knows, he sees your endeavor, then he gives mercy. Gyanina statva darshi. He knows, he can see the truth. He can understand the truth and he can explain the truth to you. So when he does that, he'll only do that if there's mercy. He won't do it otherwise. And from your side, it's seva. So this is the beautiful equation. So the same thing happens with Krishna. So only when you serve, then only you can get understanding. Otherwise, you cannot get understanding about Krishna. Krishna is not understood that way. It's not by reading a book that you can understand who is Krishna. Even by hearing, purification goes on. But until you serve, until you do devotional service, that is the defining feature that puts you on the speedway of the journey back to Godhead. Because this is why Krishna is saying, Tesham Satati Yuktanam Bhajatam Priti Purvakam Tadadi Buddhi Yogam Tam Yena Maam Upayanti Te. 10.10 Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is in Tesham Shatati Yuktanam. If one is doing his bhajata priti purvakam, if he's doing his bhajan, his sadhana, his chanting, hearing, all these spiritual activities, but priti purvakam, 
with love priti if he is doing it with love and endeavoring with love then tada di buddhi yogam tam i give the understanding so if you want to understand krishna you want to understand this world you want to understand krishna you want to understand devotional service your level of understanding at this moment is proportional to your endeavor your spiritual effort it's as simple as that what you know about krishna now is simply proportionate to your endeavor so if the more you endeavor the more devotional service you do the more krishna will reveal tadadi buddhi yogam tam i give the buddhi the understanding yena mam upayanti the how to come to me yena mam how to come to me so how to come closer and closer to krishna so this is the secret devotional service once we know this in truth tatvataha we have to know this in truth because when we convinced of this then there's no need to convince to do devotional service and as as a manager also i can tell you how many times we phone and cry to devotees please come do some service please come do some service please come do some service we give first initiation then we even give brahman initiation and we still cry please come do please come do why 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 they're not coming forward because the endeavor is less therefore the understanding is less proportionate they don't have mature understanding yet they don't have the, their understanding has not matured to the point where they have made this connection between endeavor mercy endeavor devotional service endeavor and understanding and it's a very deep point of devotional service So please devotees whatever chances you get is been given as a blessing by Krishna remember all of it is auspicious every part of Krishna consciousness is auspicious even that bad which is happening to you right now that's also auspicious that is also has its roots in auspiciousness Krishna has a bigger plan the thing is you don't know that plan if you knew that plan it wouldn't be in auspicious <laughs> right now you don't know that plan that's why you feeling it in auspicious but if you endeavor by doing some devotional service he'll reveal tadadi buddhi yogam tam he'll reveal to you what to do how to do how to endeavor how to come closer so please whatever effort you can do in devotional service Yes you are helping the temple yes you are doing devotional service but at the end of the day it's for yourself it's for me it's for me to grow how do you grow if you don't do anything how do you grow if you don't make any efforts to advance how do you grow if you don't read prabhupad's books how do you grow if you don't read shila prabhupad's books yesterday there was a beautiful everybody knows by sheshika prabhu is the head of book distribution in iskon and is very well known to be well read so he gives his secret that if you just read uh, 41 pages a day you can complete the whole shrimad bhagavatam in one year that's all 41 pages how long it takes maybe half an hour but do it like your life depends on it do it from the heart do it for krishna at the end of the day even you don't understand who understands who can say they understand in full we krishna is unlimited how can you understand something that's unlimited so according to your realization he will reveal he'll give you what you need to know so don't worry if you can't understand just keep on reading just keep on hearing about krishna that's one of the reasons why we're doing these kind of video classes and you know at first i was thinking it's too simple you know people won't uh, people won't relate it's too simple but then i said how many people pick up prabhupad's books to read and then when they reading they one of the main things they're saying prabhu i can't understand it. it's too technical and it's too philosophical i can't understand So therefore we decided to do these video classes online where we go through Prabhupada's word by word we go through Prabhupada's books word by word 
the most important part of all these classes that I'm doing is that we are getting a chance to read Srila Prabhupada's books. It's not all, it's not the fun and games and entertainment and sometimes I feel embarrassed also. I'm telling you all my nonsense stories. <laughs> My mother was scolding. She was saying, what is this? Uh, my parents were even scolding. What is this, all these nonsense stories you're telling there in the class? What is this, all these nonsense stories you're telling in the class there? This is supposed to be spiritual class. But if we don't put any masala, then how the curry will taste nice? <laughs> so these are just put there to connect the pastime and to connect activities so that we listen and we read Srila Prabhupada's words, read Srila Prabhupada's purports. Hmm? For the effort that he put in, surely I can put some effort. Hmm? How many years of just sleeping two hours a day to translate all of these works, then surely I can put half an hour just to read hmm? a few verses. So I hope that these videos are also giving that inspiration as a starting point to read closely uh, Srila Prabhupada's books. My main satisfaction in doing this is that I can read Srila Prabhupada's purports word by word carefully together with you. So thank you for that association. So it goes on to say, thus they gave up the idea of binding him but in comparison between Krishna and his devotees, Krishna sometimes agrees to be defeated. So you see, yesterday we were talking about the tug of war. Hmm? The tug of war of love. So who will win? First Mother Yashoda wins. Then Krishna wins. Then Mother Yashoda again wins. Then Krishna wins. So it goes back and forth. And it's interesting, we're using the rope here. <laughs> So it's a really good analogy, the tug of war, because you can't have tug of war without the rope and you can't have Damodar Leela without the rope. So it's a tug of war of love where mother is endeavoring, Krishna is giving mercy. Mother is endeavoring, Krishna is giving mercy. So we can see that exchange that who will win? So Prabhupada is saying here, sometimes Krishna gets defeated by his devotee. Not sometimes, all the time. <laughs> Krishna is all the time defeated. Even in terms of the Leela, he may win. But in terms of love, he is defeated. He only won in terms of the Leela. But in terms of love, he is defeated. So this beautiful pastime brings out the depth of that love in this transcendental tug of war. Damodar. Hmm? The one whose belly was tied. Mm? This transcendental tug of war, of love between Krishna and Mother Yashoda. Prabhupada concludes by saying, Thus Krishna internal energy yoga maya was brought to work and Krishna agreed to be bound by Mother Yashoda. So you see what energy Krishna is using? Yoga maya. This is his internal energy. He's not using maha maya, his external energy. Mm? Prakriti kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvasaha ahamkar vimudatma kartavam itimanyate. That this external energy is all working under my control and the soul is trapped in this energy. And how am I doing it? Daiviyesha gunamai mama maya duratyaya. This maya, mama maya. This is my external energy. This material energy is my energy. So he goes on to say, Mam eva ye prapadyante, mayam etam tarantite. That if you take shelter of me, then you can easily cross this. So Krishna doesn't take shelter of the material energy. He has his yoga maya. Two types of maya shakti is there. One is the maha maya and one is the yoga maya. So the external energy, the internal energy. So Krishna uses the internal energy and he decides to become bound. He allows Mother Yashoda to bind him due to her endeavor, due to her effort, due to her uh, perspiration. He can see she endeavored so much. Therefore, he's blessing her. So it's a beautiful exchange of pure love 
we're getting a glimpse of pure, unadulterated, pristine, pure love, concentrated, concentrated pure love. This is what we're seeing here. This is what we're hearing about here. And this is what we can appreciate uh, in Krishna's exchange with his devotees. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the class today. Please join us again tomorrow. Hare Krishna.